Good morning. Hey, people, how y'all doing this lovely day? You know, I'm tired of everybody wanting to be black. But nobody really, really, really wants to be black. But first of all, let me say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, let me welcome you, welcome you to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, Alexander O'Neill had a song out. A lot of y'all that's old enough, uh, y'all going to remember this. He said, um, your hair was long, but now it's short. Something that remind me every day. You're a saint, baby. No rhyme or reason. It's lying season. You're a fake, baby. Y'all remember that? Now you busted. Can't be trusted. You're a fake. Oh, Lord, we got another one of these. Anyway. <laughs> Everybody want to be black, don't want to be black, like I said before. They don't want to be black, but there are some that really do. Like the boys, um, the word is out on Sean King. I really don't know, but, you know, that's a whole different conversation. And y'all know how I feel about that. I feel that America is so insane. That's why it's you have to shut down in this place because everybody raped us and they know it. I mean, they raped us, right? So we're all mixed up. But yet still, they want to act as if we're different. Not only are we not human beings, we're just totally different. But then you have those diehards like Rachel Dolezal. And of course, the latest. We want to talk about uh, the Jessica Krug. And the latest is Vitillo Haddad. And she was up there in Madison. Another race faker. She was unmasked. Unmasked, unmasked, unmasked. She admits lying about being black and resigns from the University of Madison. Okay. She identifies as non-binary. Y'all see all these labels? You see how, just look at the sickness. I mean, now, I get it. Labels do define. Where does it end? Somebody calling the Calvary for this perception of freedom gone mad. I hear you, Brother Gil Scott. I hear you. I hear you. It's because she is actually Southern Italian and Sicilian. The graduate student confessed to deception in two medium blog posts. Uh, Vitillo Haddad entered black organizing spaces. And when others asked about being black, did, did not say no on three different occasions. So in other words, when somebody asked her at least three separate occasions, are you black? Now you start to see how this color shit. Man. Ugh. The teacher apologized for every ounce of Heartbreak and betrayal it caused. Vitolo had died, resigned from teaching at the university, as well as the role of the co president of the Teaching Assistant Association. Um, like I said, she's in line with Jessica Krug, another white professor at George Washington University, who resigned last week after confessing she'd been faking, like Rachel Dolezal. And y'all let it be known how a lot of y'all, how y'all felt about that. 
And the sad part about it is it's gone so crazy. And the reason why it's mad is because it's too crazy to begin with. It The whole perception of color is so sick. And things like this, I don't know how y'all mind work, but I know how mine work. And sometimes as I sit back and look just how crazy I have, I take, have to take on a bird's eye view. I can't just be down in it because then I, I, I'm looking at it just like you looking at it. But if I take a bird's eye view approach and I'm looking down on these damn fools who are gone crazy over the skin color of each and every one. Some of them think they better than the other ones. It's like the star belly snitches, I'm saying. And within this, you got black people passing white. The Creoles, if you go down Louisiana and the, or all over, I mean, them, the, the, the blacks that, you know, who just, the French, how, how all that mix came up with a race, Geechee. <laughs> Or the ones who passed. Or even the sharecroppers who were raped by the plantation owner. And the kids look white. Because they're white. There's white in them. So what do we do about this? How do we... How do we deal with this? I mean, it's, I'm saying for all these white folk that talk about affirmative action and how black people, um, are getting all these, uh, entitlement programs and they're getting everything in the universe because they're black. What the hell y'all got to say about Miss Haddad and Jessica Cruz? I like to really know from some of my white listeners. What the hell do y'all think about these women? I don't got nothing against them. Like I said, no judgment, no shame. I'm just bringing the story. Then what? This is what it is. To me, it's all so crazy. This, this, this uh, racial shit will drive you crazy. Let me tell you something real, real profound. I'll never forget this story that Dr. Francis Chris Wilson told. She was doing her clinicals. She was working in a facility, like I've worked in so many of them, um, where people have mental challenges, and you are sitting there, and so every once in a while they'll say something so profound that it make you think, who's who's crazy? <laughs> and man, if I may use that word. And Dr. Francis Chris said, that there was this guy in there, he was raising all kinds of hell, always, you know, giving the staff a problem. They got to shoot him up with Thorazine, and he's having a, a hard time adjusting. And, you know, one day he just was calm. And he came out, and they let him out the room, maybe earned enough points to come and sit out, whatever. And he asked, could he talk to her? And she said, well, sure. Well, you know, and she said, well, more so, can I talk to you? So as she said, she began to think to ask him some questions. I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing this story. Uh, the guy told her, he said, you know, Doc, my life would be so wonderful. If I could just figure out the keys to the colors. What? Yeah, I, my whole life is fucked up. Because I can't figure out the keys to the colors. Have mercy, y'all. Now, that may not be profound to y'all. But it was profound enough for her to name her book, The Isis Papers, The Keys to the Color. Because what is the keys to this crazy shit? Because if you had a key, you could just stick it in a lock and unlock this shit so y'all would get up off our throats 
up 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 our backs. Those of y'all who want to play black, you won't have the need to. Those of y'all who want to play white, whatever that means, you won't feel the need to because you will be done figured out. Keys to the colors. I don't know. When Francis Christ said that, I just, I got it. I was like, wow. Amongst all the other great stories that she told, like the little boy who said, she said, don't you want to be uh, a grow up? Because he was one of those kids, like I, I used to be in one of my uh, group homes, always argumentative, having behavior challenges, being aggressive. And uh, she said, listen, don't you want, this is when she was working with the juvenile treatment center. Grow up and be successful and you can be a leader and help your people. Be like a strong young black man. He said, no. I don't want to help my people. You get shot. Because everybody trying to help black people get shot. And killed. What little boy would say something like that? Unless he was 100% honest. I guess he figured out the keys to the colors. Hmm. But back to Vitolo Haddad. She vowed to make amends for every ounce of heartbreak and betrayal caused by her false claims. In a second follow-up medium post on September 8th, the graduate student in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication gave specific examples where Vitolo Hodad had deceived others about her racial identity and went into detail about the confusion over identity. She said, even though I'm Italian, Sicilian, that's where that strong black look, that Hannibal up in there come from. She said, I went along with whatever people saw me at. I just never corrected them. She recounted, yes, three separate incidents where three where others specifically asked about being black. And she did not say no. So obviously, you said yes, right? When asked if I identify as black, my answer should have always been no. There were three separate incidents where I said otherwise. See, you know, all this double talk, because cause that's how white people like to do it. But let me make it plain. She lied. And when she said my answers was in otherwise, she said, I'm not white. Okay. I don't know what kind of, you know, soft shoe shit this is, but that's what it was. She said, I should not have adopted any identity outside of what I know. Um, Vitalo Hadid stopped short of confessing to lying, but admitted the need to have clarified my identity on these three occasions. Now, that's where the problem come in. Because you can't if, if, uh, confess to your lying. See, when I lie, I said, you know what? I'm lying. You caught me? Oh, boy. Now, let me go from there. It's just interesting how the language um, that they use when they're dealing with anything other than us, you know, it's just amazing to me how they pussyfoot and soft shoe around as opposed to um, 
you know, so whether it's her or whether it's the article, I've just said she stopped short of lying. So to me, she still got some more healing to do because you're not being 100% honest with yourself right now because you just got caught. Otherwise, you probably still will be doing that. And you just said you're not coming clean with it. I should not have adopted any identity outside of what I know. No, you have to say, no, I pretended to be somebody else that I wasn't. Um, And yes, I did. I lied. I mean, come on. But, you know, it says she stopped short of confessing to lying, but admitted to the need to have clarified my identity. What the hell is that? You lying. You should say, I'm not a DOS, because that's what they were asking you. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, if I'm a, if I'm Sicilian and I look like this, that's because, yeah, I'm, I look like um, the, the, I'm a descendant of Hannibal, who was a black man who rode in on to, on, to Italy on an elephant. That's who I am. That's part of me. That's what you see. I mean, bam. Now, again, the keys to the colors. I just think we're so freaking obsessed with it. I'm so sick of it. I am really sick of it. And uh, white people have gone crazy because of it. They're just so sick because of, of the color scheme. It's, it's, the, it's messed all of us up. But they are really crazy. Um, And their madness is real parasitic when it comes to us. Because we have a relationship like abusive lovers. They won't let us go. They want to keep feeding off of us. They won't let us, you know, get from up under. I mean, I'm saying it collectively, you guys. Just just bear with me. But yet and still, I think that we're the engine that could, that runs America, basically. All these, you know, entities that really run off of our demise, off of our, our dysfunction, okay? It's really amazing how they set this up. But at the end of the day, y'all can't forget. You got to continue to read because we gave them the blueprint of how to run a society. So whenever I get extremely mad, extremely mad, extremely mad, I have to always go back to we allowed them. And once you know history, we allowed them to come into Timbuktu and study alchemy. We allowed them to understand how to navigate and run cities. And, and to really create, they just did it for for um, evil. It's just that simple. Um, and so if if human beings can understand that, I if you belong to the human family, you shouldn't be parasitic. You really should. You should just be this. And so now we're at the point that we can't even re because of slavery and all that. We probably you know, got to get away from you. We, it's just, it's, it's just a bad relationship. And the police departments are never going to, um, uh, um, take ownership of the fact that they are slave catchers, basically derived from patty rollers and all, and they're never going to admit that and that the behavior and the mentality is still the same. So, it amazes me that when somebody wants to step into this side, this arena, what do they want? What are they stepping into? What uh, is missing in their own life that they want to step over here to say, okay, I want to represent like this? I don't know. I mean, matter of fact, I wonder what y'all think. If, if you know, if a person steps out of themselves and goes over to another color. Another culture, another race, whatever. What? What does that mean? What does that mean? Y'all help me out with this. Because I know I get a lot of feedback from this because I really don't give a damn. <laughs> but I know, on, and, and on some levels I do, yin and yang. So what do y'all think? Here's, we got a new one. Her name is Batolo Haddad. She apologized now for the deception of, of being this person. But she's up here in Madison. So this story broke into the Daily Mail. And so it's it's a national story now. Uh, 
she just got, you know, an interest in the situation. Just like to me, Rachel Dolezal, all, all the rest of them. I don't get it. But here's your damn affirmative action sitting right back on your damn lap. Anyway, tell me what you think, family. <laughs> you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video.